subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now we are going to look at eigenfunction of a continuous time LTI system. Now what is the eigenfunction? See if output of a system is same as the input except for any scalar multiplier then we are saying that the input is known as eigenfunction of the system. What am I trying to say is suppose this is a system S right. I applied an input FT, input FT and in output I got same input same same function except for multiplication with any scalar multiplier A ok some scalar got multiplied with the input and I obtained the same output then what am I saying this FT is going to be eigen function of the given system eigen function of given system. Now why are we interested in studying some concept like this, so why are we trying to uh, understand this eigenfunction is, see uh, whenever I try to find the output of a system I have to go through convolution integral, I have to calculate the convolution integral to determine the output of the system. But if I am giving eigenfunction as input of the system that complicated convolution integral is going to simplify and become simple multiplication operation. I just need to determine the scalar multiplier A and this convolution simplifies to simple multiplication operation. That is why we are interested in finding out the eigenfunctions of a system. Now consider, consider a system with impulse response as A into del T, A into del T. Now if a system has such kind of impulse response for any function that you apply any input that you apply to this kind of system output is going to be the form of AFT only since convolution of any signal with delta T is going to yield FT itself. So what do we say any system which has impulse response as this unit impulse signal has all the input signals as eigenfunctions ok. If I am having impulse response of this kind of this form any input signal that you apply is going to act as eigenfunction to such a system. Now we are interested in finding out some functions, some signals which can be eigenfunction to any system that I apply ok. Uh, for that case I am considering suppose I have a system with impulse response HT and I am applying to input I am applying cos omega naught t ok. I am considering input as cos omega naught t. Now I need to find I am trying to check if this cos omega naught t is an eigenfunction for the given system. Now see when I try to find the output yt what do I do? I am going to perform ht convolution cos omega naught t right which is going to be integration minus infinity to infinity h tau cos omega naught t minus tau d tau. Now I know the identity for cos a minus b I am just using that identity and separating the integrals. So this becomes minus infinity to infinity h tau cos omega naught t cos omega naught tau plus minus infinity to infinity h tau sin omega naught t sin omega naught tau d tau ok here also we are having this d tau right. Now see since this cos omega naught t is independent of the integration independent variable is uh, tau here. So I can take this cos omega naught t outside cos omega naught t and this integration is going to become minus infinity to infinity h tau cos omega naught tau d tau. Similarly I can take sin omega naught t outside sin omega naught t this integration becomes h tau sin omega naught tau d tau. Now given the case that ht is even if ht is even if ht is even you know that this sin signal is an odd signal sin omega naught t is going to be an odd signal and multiplication of an even an odd signal gives us odd signal. We have already seen this ok. Multiplication of an even and odd signal is going to yield an odd signal and integration of an odd signal over the interval minus infinity to infinity is going to give 0. So this integral is going to cancel. This is going to give us result 0. Whereas 
cos omega naught t is an even signal itself multiplying it with an even signal is going to give us an even signal and this this is going to give me some scalar okay see the variable here the variable of integration here is tau in both the operation signals both the functions i am having this variable tau when i am going to integrate it i am not going to get any term of t okay this is the only term of t i have got so this integral is going to be of some form of this kind okay which is this h omega naught is a scalar this is just a scalar so on giving cos omega naught t as input to any system if its impulse response was even what did i get i got the same function as output i got same function in the output also just multiplied with the scalar h omega naught that is why i can say that cos omega naught t is an eigen function of this system if h t is an even function cos omega naught t can be an eigen function of the system just because on giving cos omega naught t as input i got the same function as output multiplied by a scalar a scalar defined by this integration scalar h omega naught can be defined as this can, this integration can be defined as minus infinity to infinity h tau cos omega naught tau d tau right so i can say that cos omega naught t is an eigen function of the system this is how we defining eigen functions of a system and now why do we define them because for calculating output of such signal such inputs we do not need to perform convolution complicated convolution operation this converts to a simple multiplication operation see this is going to come handy when we are going to learn about fourier analysis fourier series okay so we are going to uh, consider this kind of representation of signals that is why we are looking at it right now we are going to look at another signal which can be eigen function to systems fine so when we took input as cos omega naught t we had one limitation that the impulse response needs to be a even signal only now i'm interested in finding an eigen function which is general in form okay which does not require which is not put any constraint on the impulse response i i may have any impulse response any type of impulse response of system i want the eigen function to yield the same output fine so for that case i'm considering phasor phasor what is a phasor oh, okay so we've uh, learned about euler signal right e to the power j omega not t so i'm considering this as input of a system and i'm going to see if this is a general general eigen function that is for any kind of impulse response if this is going to yield the same output now if i try to find the output what am i going to have minus infinity i'm writing the convolution integral directly okay so this is going to give me h tau e to the power j omega not t minus tau d tau now what happens i can just take e to the power j omega not t outside because this is independent of integration so i get e to the power j omega not t integration minus infinity to infinity h tau e to the power minus j omega not tau d tau now see h t this h t may be even odd any kind of signal this is going to give me this output of same form as input with this scalar multiplication this is just going to be a scalar see this is not having any terms in limits in inside the function anywhere we are not having t so this is just going to be a scalar i am representing this scalar by h of j omega not this is going to be a complex scalar since i am having j here so i can write this as h j omega not so when i am applying at e power j omega not t as input to any system i am going to obtain the same signal as output just multiplied with a scalar scalar which can be defined as h of j omega not can be defined as integration from minus infinity to infinity h tau e power minus j omega not tau d tau right this is how we are defining the scalar so we can say that this phasor e power j omega not t is going to be eigen function for any general uh, system okay any system that we are considering now if we are applying we are having uh, our inputs of this form see we have discussed about this euler signal in the uh, 
first few lectures that we introduce this complex variable j for our convenience now you can understand why because in introducing this complex variable j by introducing this phasers what we what we have done is we can express any signal in the form of phasers and not need to perform convolution we can just calculate our output by simple multiplication operation we just need to calculate the scalar which is which can be obtained by this simple calculation and output can be obtained by simple multiplication operations okay uh, fine one more thing that you can see here is suppose you have suppose you have a system which has impulse response of this form fine and you apply a input ft what is the output that you are going to obtain a into ft minus t naught if this ft if ft is periodic if ft is periodic with period t naught that means a into ft minus t naught is going to be equal to a ft if ft is periodic with period t naught then obviously f of t minus t naught is going to be equal to ft then we can say that we can say that a of del t minus t naught for for a of del t minus t naught to be impulse response can be impulse response of any periodic function any periodic function with period t with period t then all the inputs are going to be eigen functions any input that we give to such kind of system any periodic input that we give to such kind of system is going to be eigen function of such a system right now we're going to look at a question in eigen functions fine in this question they've given you lti system which is just, uh, which uh, input and input are input and output are related by this given equation and they're asking you to compute impulse response of the system check whether this e power st is an eigen function of the system so we've uh, just recently discussed that e to the power j omega naught t is an eigen function to all the systems all kind of system this is the same thing they've just represented j omega with a new variable s okay and they're asking you to find eigen value of the system term corresponding to st eigen value of the system corresponding to e power st means that scalar multiplier okay they are asking you to calculate scalar multiplier corresponding to e power st using its definition we just saw the definition okay hj omega not was equal to integration minus infinity h tau e power minus st using that they want you to calculate eigen value okay uh, that scalar multiplier is known as eigen value of the system so we begin with the first part we are going to calculate impulse response ht of the system we know that impulse response ht of the system is output of the system when the input is impulse signal so if in place of x tau i just replace with delta with the delta tau then i am going to obtain output as ht so what can i say ht is going to be integration from minus infinity to t e to the power minus t minus tau in place of extra what am i going to put delta delta since since why because impulse response this ht is the output of the system when input is impulse function delta t right now you know that if t is greater than 0 since this impulse occurs at tau is equal to 0 if this impulse is included in the limit in limits of this integral only then we are going to have some value and what is this value going to be e power minus t minus tau at tau is equal to 0 but this can occur only when this t is greater than 0 if t is a negative number it does not involve tau is equal to 0 does not include occurrence of this impulse then this complete integral is going to be 0 right so uh, if t is greater than 0 ht is going to be e power minus t minus tau at t is equal to 0 using shifting property okay if you just put t is equal to 0 here you're going to obtain e minus t if i just combine these two equations what can i say ht is going to be e power minus t ut since this signal occurs only for positive values of t i multiplied it with with ut right so this is going to be the impulse response of given system now in the second part they are asking you to check that if e to the power st is an eigen function of the system see if this given signal is eigen function of the system what should happen is if i apply this 
signal if this uh, function has input to this system I should obtain an output of the same form same kind okay let us check in place of x tau I am putting I am going to put e to the power s tau e to the power s tau now let us see if I obtain something of uh, of the same kind right so this becomes e power minus t okay and since both of them are having uh, tau I can just add their powers so this becomes e to the power s plus 1 tau right I have just taken tau common I can take this e power minus t outside since this is independent of the integration and here I have e to the power s plus 1 tau d tau now if you just perform this integration you are going to obtain e to the power s plus 1 tau upon s plus 1 with limits from minus infinity to t just solve this if you just solve this you obtain e to the power minus t upper limit was t so you are going to obtain e to the power s plus 1 t minus if you put minus infinity in place of tau you are going to obtain 0 upon s plus 1 right now again if you simplify the powers So this is going to yield e to the power s t upon s plus 1. Now the condition see this s is a complex number okay this s is a number of form a plus j b right. So what is the condition is real part of s should be greater than minus 1 fine why because uh, this for this denominator to be defined I mean the real part of s should be greater than minus 1. Now uh, if, if I consider if I consider 1 plus s pl uh, 1 by s plus 1 is equal to lambda since this is a scalar only right this is just a multiplier this is not a function of t so what can I say what can I say y t is equal to lambda e to the power s t which means on applying e to the power s t as input I got the output of same form just with a scalar multiplier which is 1 by s plus 1 which implies that e to the power st is eigenfunction of the system eigenfunction of given system now this lambda itself is called the eigenvalue of the system okay right now if i just try to find eigenvalue of the system using uh, the uh, definition hs this is going to be equal to integration minus infinity to infinity ht e to the power minus st dt right just put ht we've calculated uh, limits because of this ut limits are going to change from 0 to infinity I am doing that directly fine so this is going to be integration minus s plus 1t from 0 to infinity just perform this integration so it's going to give me minus s plus 1t upon minus s plus 1 with limit 0 to infinity right if you just put the upper limit this is going to be okay I am taking this outside if you just put the upper limit this is going to be 0 and on putting the lower limit this is going to be 1 which makes it again 1 by s plus 1 right which is same as lambda okay you can see from here this this is the scalar multiply we obtained in part 2 and this is the scalar multiply we obtained by okay here also we have the same uh, restriction right uh, by using the definition also we obtain the same thing one thing uh, that you can note here is this hs this hs or this lambda is equal to value of the output at t is equal to 0 okay lambda or hs is going to be equal to value of the output of z uh, at t is equal to 0 fine if you just put t is equal to 0 in this equation this e to the power 0 is going to become 1 and y 0 is going to become lambda so what do we say is that the scalar multiplier is equal to value of the output at t is equal to 0 if you are applying eigen function to a system then you can obtain the scalar multiplier or eigen value of the system by calculating output of the system at t is equal to 0 fine so this is how we are solving problems in eigen functions and eigen values